American Ninja became very special, very special. The idea of American Ninja is Menachem Golan. Again, <laughs> he was crazy enough to suddenly say, forget about the Japanese. Let's make American Ninja, which was a crazy idea because Ninja and Japanese, that goes together with the Asian, with the Asia, with the Far East. Suddenly, the Menachem Golan comes and says, let's make American. Ninja. Well, that's fine with me. I, 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 it's okay. It's also, I, I found it as a, it's a good idea, you know, good cinematic idea. And, uh, and so we, we wrote a script. So this time, I was really involved from the beginning. There were uh, producers. They as they assigned us producers, Gideon Amir and Avi Kleinberger, myself and a writer, uh, Paul DeMilke, not the same writer, not uh, not Jim Sen, Paul DeMilke, who, ca- who comes from uh, martial art and psychology. And, and we had time to work on the script, to develop a script from scratch, from zero. And, and, and we had this notion, we wanted to, to make you know, at some point we decided that he will be a soldier in American army because we wanted to make an American movie. We didn't want to make a movie about Philippines. And they told us we must go to the Philippines because there was some money, Canon. I don't know, they had money in the Philippines. I don't know why. So we have to go to the Philippines. And we didn't want to make, a, as I told you before, I, I really like to make American movies. So this was a gimmick to have a soldier in American base. We still have an American looking movie even if we're in another country. And we started to build the character. And from the beginning, for some reason, discussion between the writer, myself, the producer, we decided to do this uh, hero, which is a reluctant hero, somebody who doesn't want to get involved in the in the action with the attitude of James Dean, type of an attitude, but a story like uh, uh, High Noon, with a hero who doesn't want to get involved, but at halfway through the story is being sucked into the action. So we started to get emotionally attached to the character. I, at least myself, to this character of American Ninja, because it was appealing. It was interesting. It was not just magic and poof and puffs. And he had a character. And then there was the casting process, which we saw 400 young people. And eventually, my preference was uh, Michael Dudikoff. I really, really liked him when he came in, and I, I, I saw him, with him, within him, I saw the character that we put on the script. It was, for me, this was the match. Eventually, Canon, you know, Menachem Golan agreed with me, and they made a deal, they hired him. Mike Stone was the martial art choreographer for this movie. Mike Stone is famous in the world of martial art. And... Uh, and we started to film. I, I usually like to start filming action. Uh, and this way I impressed the company. It was my, one of my tricks. I start with an action scene, the company is happy, and then they, they don't bother me for the rest of the, sh- of the shooting. And first of all, it was fun. It was a big crew. It was there were many people, you know, uh, in the creative side, the wardrobe, the art department was excellent. The, the wardrobe people, uh, uh, she was fantastic in coming up with idea. We invented the military look of Ninja rather than black. Uh, uh, the art department built built for us an American military base over there. In the in the action department was interesting. We, we had, as I said, Steve Lambert and he had assistant Kenny Lasko. We had uh, uh, Mike Stone uh, with Tadashi Yamashita, the black ninja. <laughs> Black Star Ninja, uh, Richard Norton came from Australia to be one of the people helping us. So there was a big group and it was excitement and it was working. And when we see the material on the screen, I started to realize that number one, Michael Dudikoff has some special charisma on the screen. Something on the screen, some special charisma that it's something that you cannot, there is no recipe for this. You don't know, it works. And the relationship between him and Steve James, we had Steve James, the relationship between them are also special on the screen. They have some special chemistry, something really worked between them. We were lucky that also the relationship between Michael Dudikoff and Judy Aronson on the screen had a good chemistry, you know, two young, beautiful people, uh, all together, three young, beautiful people working, making a movie. The crew was very big. We had three units. There was 
we could do whatever we wanted. There was no limitation to what we wanted. It's very cheap to shoot in the Philippines. And we had good, uh, we had some American crew, and but we had the Filipino crew, and they just finished finish the movie with the Coppola uh, in, in the Philippines, the Vietnam movie. And uh, so it was good crew. They knew what they were doing. The, the, the Filipino crew was good. And we were shooting in exotic locations, very interesting locations. Uh, so we got the feeling, so this was the, it was really exciting. It was really exciting time every day. And sometimes we work around the clock, the two units, you know, in the morning I work with the first unit. <laughs> we had two filming units. We actually had three filming units. So in the morning I work with the, with the one unit and in the evening, and then when we finish 12 hours, I go and work with the other unit, with the other cameraman and his crew. And we shoot other other sequences. It was exciting. And, and, and really, as and the editor was here in Los Angeles. The editor that I worked all the Ninja movies, Michael Duffy, was in Los Angeles editing the movie. And then we start to see the scenes put together. You know, he, he's editing the scenes together, and we start to see, wow, it's really working. The action is exciting. Uh, Steve James and Michael Dudikoff on the screen, it works very well. Eight weeks of shooting or nine weeks, I don't know, seven days. Oh, it was good. It was nice. Of course, the movie was bigger, longer than what we see today. A few scenes didn't make it to the screen. So the music was good, everything looks good. And Menachem Golan approaches me when we are in the final stages of editing and he's, he comes with a script which was called Night Hunter at the time. It ended up uh, Avenging Force. And he's asking me, can you read the script and tell me if it's good for uh, Michael Dudikoff and uh, Steve James? So I read the script and I was blown away. The script is fantastic, better than any action script I ever read before. Avenging Fort or Night Hunter. Okay. So next day I said, okay, yeah, it's good for Michael Dudikov. So he said, okay, go and make it. By then the company was already very big by that point. And they already had in contract Charles Bronson and uh, Chuck Norris. I didn't know Chuck Norris rejected. The script came to me because Chuck Norris didn't want to do it. But at the time I didn't, want, didn't know. So they said, okay, you guys go. It, it was written for New Orleans. You go and make it in New Orleans. The company became so big that they didn't care anymore. So the day we finished the editing of the uh, American Ninja, music, everything mixed, and I moved to New York, and the movie did not come out. You know, they're still preparing distribution. They have to prepare. So we still didn't know. We, we knew that we liked the movie. We, we see the movie, we like it. It has good fun, good love story, uh, nice actors, everybody looks good. So we went to New Orleans and we started to shoot Avenging Force. And then when we, all of us, and it's the same group, myself as a director, Michael Dudikoff, Steve James, <laughs> the two stars of American Ninja. And then the movie came out when we were working. And then slowly, slowly, week number one, week number two in the theaters, we start to hear and to understand that this is an explosion. This is not Revenge of the Ninja. This is not Ninja 3. This is an explosion. And we start to understand you start to hear worldwide, not only in America, not only in North America. In Paris, in France, in Paris, the movie was for two weeks at the top of the box office. <laughs> they called it American Warrior, not American Ninja, in France. And, and so we start to understand this is not only we did an interesting movie, good movie. Again, I'm talking about the low budget, the world of low budget. I'm not talking about big, big studio movies. We did something good here, something which is uh, taking off worldwide. So it was exciting. Uh, the, the minute we did Avenging Force and we came home, uh, back to Los Angeles, it was done in New Orleans, and editing, and American Ninja was such a success that there was no question. They wanted American Ninja 2 right away, right now, today. <laughs> But I still, I was still busy with the editing a little bit and the music. But uh, even faster than before, the day we finished the editing, I was already on an airplane on my way to South Africa. And this was again exciting, exciting movie because it was a lot of fun. We already knew that when we did number two, we knew that we are dealing with a big uh, action uh, success. You know, we couldn't walk. The movie was done in New Orleans, in uh, South Africa, in Johannesburg. We couldn't walk in the streets anymore with Michael Dudikoff and Steve James. They were big. Everybody already recognized them because they saw American Ninja. 
So we couldn't walk in the streets. It's good memories. I have good memories from those two movies. And, uh, uh, you know, myself, on a personal level, I think that Avenging Force is a better movie than American movie. Cinema, talking about cinema, character, action sequences, it's better. But uh, I, uh, I'm not the judge. The audience is the judge. <laughs> the audience around the world, they like American Ninja. It's big, big, until today, you know, it's classic. Uh, of all classics.